Benny Minutes voor vandaag. Zolang ik nog enigszins de griep heb, moet ik het helaas doen met alleen kant en klare nieuwsberichten. De komende dagen is daardoor de uitzending waarschijnlijk dus nog in het Engels. Hallo, this is Mike Marsh, G1IAR, and welcome to the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS National News. Russian military traffic continues to be a big problem on the 40 and 20 meter bands, says the latest IARU monitoring system newsletter. There have also been many other intrusions from various other nationalities, including over-the-horizon radar on 10 MHz, Spanish-language fishery traffic on 1.810 MHz, and North Korean diplomatic transmissions on 20 meters from their Moscow embassy. The full report of the IARU Region 1 monitoring team can be downloaded from IARUMS-R1 Dot org. And any report should be sent to the UK Intruder Watch service via email to iw at rsgb.org.uk. The Robin Hood Award has recently been launched by the Phoenix Amateur Radio Club based around Nottingham. It's for making contact with fixed or portable radio stations at the many places associated with the legendary character, so not just around Nottingham. There are categories for both activators and chasers, and details of the self-regulated free award can be found by following this link from m0phx.org. Dot UK. That's Mike Zero Papa Hotel X Ray. Dot org. Dot UK. This week has seen two developments in the amateur space communications. On Thursday, the Brazilian CubeSat Serpens, call sign Papa Yankee Zero Echo Sierra Alpha, was deployed from the International Space Station. Details of the mission are all on view at tinyurl.com slash papayanke zero echo sierra alpha. And reception reports are all welcome too. We also understand that a Chinese Long March 6 will be launching four CubeSats with amateur radio payloads around 2300 hours on Friday the 18th of September. The latest on these and other satellites can be found up at the AMSAT UK website. Go to amsat-uk.org. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. Hello, I'm Jeff Emery, VK4ZPP, and I've been thinking. One of the features of amateur radio has been its ideal that all hams are equal. This has been a historical belief which found its form in the amateur's code. Over the past century, it has been common practice not to use forms of address that would identify the operator as being superior. Of course, this has been easy to do when contacts have been between strangers, and even better if they were DX. Princes and academics were addressed by the name they gave and ranks and titles dispensed with amongst amateur operators. The sense of belonging to a giant worldwide club and a belief in equality was honoured in the practice. Then the reality is that people engrossed in the art of wireless came from different backgrounds from most walks of life that you can think of. This meant that the school student had different funds to the professional person and the investment in parts and equipment varied. This is a fact of life that still remains today. Where things get strange is that there seems to be a small core of amateurs who feel inadequate. These are the ones who seem to delight in picking on other operators to show how big their own egos are. I've witnessed this in various forms over the years. The CW operators who diminish the voice ops. The open license holder who has to correct the limited, the novice, and now the foundation license holder. Just to be fair, this level of judgment is also aimed at the old-timers who, like a rag chew that includes the updates on health and medicines. As much as it might be satisfying to stick the finger up at what we think is wrong with another amateur, remember that public misbehaviour reflects on the whole amateur community, and tact, courtesy and privacy go a long way in maintaining the traditions of our hobby. I'm Jeff Emery, and that's what I think. How about you? <laughs>